Hi, I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. And today we are going to be turning this little container crock. It even has a lid. I find this is absolutely adorable and I would definitely have this in my house just the way it is. It's got the roosters, chickens, hens, whatever they are. <laughs> I like these. But I want to actually turn this into an old looking crock and that's what we will be doing in this video. So this is the start of it and first off I'm going to be doing the first coat which I always do as charcoal grey, Rust-Oleum char chalk paint, charcoal grey. It's a darkish grey. I don't use black for one reason, the main reason. This is easy for me to buy, just like this. Don't have to tint it, add it, or anything else. But also I found over time using black is a little harsh and it modernizes um, the look where the gray looks a little more subdued, subtle underneath and is more of a vintagey kind of old rustic look. So the gray actually, even though very much easier for me to obtain and buy, it worked out better for me. So first off, I am going to just paint around the edge. Now, a lot of people say, I can't get the chalk paint to uh, um, adhere to anything shiny, glass or whatever, it's not working out. Well, the main thing is to take your time and put that first coat on as lightly as you can. You don't want it thick, you want it light and just push it on into as much as you can, leaving it like that. I'm going to also put some around the top here too and just go around it. Now the th first layer, as I say, should be thin, but the key is for the first layer is to leave it overnight. Leave it until it is completely cured because when you put the next la layers on, you may pull this back because it is water-based. It's easy to pull back off, paint off a shiny surface. It's, it's wipeable. So you don't want to wipe it back off. And the best way to have that, that it doesn't wipe back off, is to let it dry the best it can. So overnight, couple of days, anything like that is the best. So we're going to just put one coat on this all the way around the top and the bottom and let that dry overnight and then we'll see what to do next. So the charcoal grey is dry, it was just light covering over the edges, the bottom and the top. I also put a layer over where the actual pattern was underneath, there was some red and that in the picture and I just thought putting this over would be easier when I do the light cut, um, top coats to just cover that rather than trying to cover over red. So what I'm going to be doing now is getting, what I always do is the clear coat and I'm going to put a clear coat over um, everywhere that I did the grey and I think, yeah, I'll put it everywhere I did the grey and um, just let that dry and then we'll do the next step. So I'll just don't have much left of this so I'm just going to stir it up a little bit. You don't need a lot of this. A lot of people slap it on and it gets gungy, yellowy and you really don't need much especially if you're using it as a top coat but right now we're using it as a barrier for when we do some wet distressing back. So I'm going to just put this everywhere. I've done the grey. and then just let that dry. Just slap it on. Try and make sure you don't have anywhere that it's clumped together. And then uh, just, as I say, let that dry. And leave it alone. And then we will be doing the top coat. So now I've got the clear coat is dry and we are going to start doing the actual colour finishes. I thought I had a little bit more of this, which the colour is oatmeal, but I don't have a lot of it. 
and I find it's a little bit dark to match up with a crock but I also have this one here which is it's called sheepskin it's also the same brand as this color but I had it made up myself so I've got a sheepskin so it's kind of a creamy color so what I'm going to try and do is blend them both to create a color of a crock because white would be too too stark for this so I'm going to be putting on I put some water in here to get a little bit of some of this out because I want some of it but I'm going to be just putting on some of this as you see there's not much left but that's okay because then I'm going to go back in and which for now reminds me I'll have to buy some more but I'm going to go back in with this which is quite thick so that's even better and just kind of dab this on top so I'm just going to keep going dabbing the reason I'm dabbing is I want texture and whenever you're doing something old looking texture is always good um, smooth and shiny never makes you think old so I'm that's why I'm doing it this method so I'm just gonna keep splotching is my technical word for this the colors together and just going around the whole thing top bottom the whole lot getting some highs some lows and just putting the colors together and as I say I do want some of the oatmeal but I don't have a lot of it left so I'm just going to be dabbing it in areas I want a, li a little bit darker so this is going to take probably two coats to get it covered and when I finish doing that I will then show you what it looks like and we'll do the next step but make sure you do top bottom and around the edges as well just dabbing it on to give texture and as I say this paint is quite thick so that's even better because it'll be easier to give some texture to it and just keep going if you find you've got too much texture you can add water or smooth it out or you can even when it's dry you can even just um, sandpaper it out with a light sanding if you wish so I'm just going to keep going around adding this it's kind of a creamy color it's called sheepskin all the way around to do this crock so now this is dry you can see the different colors coming through we may just put on a third coat but the third coat would just be coming in places where we may want to put some dark or some light I'm gonna think about that but first I'm gonna do some wet distressing back and um, I'll do that first with a wet cloth and on this I'm not wet distressing it lots I'm just doing a little tiny bit and just wet distressing back to where I did the actual uh, ch you know the charcoal gray so I'm just gonna rub lightly along the edges and along the top and just bring back some of the darkness now this being a chalk paint that's a little bit harder to distress where the DIY paint is a little easier but uh, as you can see we're getting little tiny bits of wet distress back and that's all I want just tiny bits in areas that are just in here the top just a little tiny bit in here I'm just rub until I get down to the darkness it's a few layers but just a little bit and as you can see just a little bit poked through and that's all I want again and I'm just going to do a little bit on the bottom here just push down 
little wet distress back. As I say, some paints are easy to wet distress back, some a little harder, but just take your time. You can always paint back over if you wet distress too much, but uh, just take your time with it. Getting some nice colouring coming through here. And along the top. And that's kind of just all you need. I'm going to go around doing just a little bit, just in parts. And as you can see, it does take off a little bit of the paint too. So just you can go back in and touch that up. But I just want a little wear and tear. And I'm just going to kind of do it in the area that I'm thinking I'm going to do the front because I don't want to rub too much. So I'm going to keep going and rub just a little bit all the way around. Right, so I think I have the colour I am looking for. I'm going to pick this as my front with some of the black coming through, or grey coming through as I should say. And now I'm going to use, it's an IOD ink pad and this is the stone grey. I find the grey more subtle than the black. And here I have this, I believe it's the Distressed Stamp. I'm going to just use this just a tiny bit, not a lot, very sparingly. So I'm just going to put a little ink on the pad and just put it in a few different places sparingly. I don't want it all over. I don't need it all over just to give a little darkness through. Again, put some more ink on the actual stamp again. I'm doing it on the parts that are a little more gaps in between rather than the heavy parts. And I'm just doing it kind of on the front, just a little bit, just, as I say, just a little. I don't know if you can see that with the light, but I got just a little coming through. So that's all I'm going to do with that. I may do some on the back too, we'll see. This one here is the crackle stamp. I'm just going to use this stone grey again, and I'm just going to have a little bit of the uh, crackle. And the crackle is only going to be around the parts that I have here that are a little bit um, of the uh, wet distress through so that's where the chalk paint was that I distressed through and I'm just going to push a little of the crackle I don't want too much I'm only doing it in areas that again I distressed through So here we go, we have a little crackle just in some areas and right at the bottom there. That's all I'm doing with that. Next I'm going to be doing, I always find, correct me if I'm wrong, but on old crocs there is usually a number with a circle around and the nearest thing I found was getting a circle I wanted, uh, a number I wanted, which I'm going to use this number six here. And instead of using paint, I find it's not paint. So I'm going to just put this stencil down where I want it to be. I've put a little tape on the numbers I don't want to use. And I'm going to be using the ink pad to push down well, just on the number I want. It doesn't need to be perfect. I actually don't want it to be perfect. So I'm just going to get my fingers out of the way, put the pad down and see if I can get this in here. As I say, I do not want it perfect. That is not what I'm looking for. So I'm just kind of pushing the ink pad into just the number six here.
Oh, I got a little too much. I have a wet cloth here. I'm just gonna grab that and just get rid of the too much. If you get it quickly, you can get it quite well. And as I say, you don't want too much. I'm gonna put this back down where my six is and just press down lightly because I had a little too much ink splash out there. That's better. Again, too much. Let's see if I can get this going how I want it to be. There we go. It's not perfect, but in some ways I kind of prefer it. There's my six. It's not very good, but I like it that way, actually. So sometimes doing things by mistake. Now I have the circle. This is kind of a circle I found. I've got rid of the inside part because I don't want that, so I taped it off. And I'm going to put this around my number six. So let's see if I can cover the six, get my circle, and see if we can do this a little better. It's not easy doing the stencil with ink. So I'm just going to push it in the areas I want it to be, not too heavy. Tap it in there. And that is actually so bad, it's perfect. There you go. I think that just being there subtle is what you usually see on an actual old crock, and I'm liking that. Now, back with the ink pad. Now, what I do with the ink pad um, to make things look more um, vintage looking, I always go around the bottom and around the top just gently around. And where the, I've done the crack, I'm just gonna do a little ink and then a down here. Just a line with the actual pad itself. You see that, the little line. So just use your pad at an angle and just do a little line. And you can go back in, put some crackle around it if you wish, but that's where I'm kind of leaving that be for the ink and we've got the number which went on so badly but that actually is pretty good and then the circle went on even more badly um, so it's not easy to do that was not easy to do but because it came out so rough it looks aged to me and I actually prefer it so there you go that came out nicely and if you don't like it while it's wet wash it and put you know use a damp cloth or rub it off and then just do it again, you know, or you can paint back over it and do it again. So now I'm going to just dab where I put around the edge, just to soften the line. So it's not a complete line, just soften it a little. And I think, as I say, then we are done with the ink and we're gonna go on to the next step of sealing it and uh, making it look old. Okay, to finish the aged look, I'm gonna use, this is a really old tin here, but um, it says Smote Glaze. It's a chalk, Rust-Oleum chalk glaze. It's an antiquing glaze. This is the Smote Glaze, which is the grayish color glaze. And what I'm gonna do is use a dollar store little stencil brush and a little bit of the glaze to just shake it up a little bit up here. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of the glaze off the lid and just go around the top in the crevice. And along the bottom. 
and a little bit over my line where I did an, an aged line. Again, tap on the on the lid a little bit and just a little bit around the edge, all the way around. And then in the crevice. Again, around the edge, in the crevice, and then along the bottom. Until you get all the way around. Go all the way around with your shadowing. along the bottom carry on around the bottom and then along the middle part here we line back up. I'm just gonna go back over with a brush a little dry. I'm gonna use a damp cloth just on this area here and push back a little tiny bit because it's a little darker than I'd like it to be. So just use a damp cloth and then I'm just going to carry on doing just going up the bottom just a little Just going slightly up the bottom. A bit more. Tell you all the way around. And this is what we've got so far. And now we're going to use a different one, which is the same. It's a glaze, an aged glaze. And this one is, it's the brown one. So it's the antique glaze, this one. This one's the smoked. This one's the aged. Smoked is the gray one. The brown one is the aged one. Give it a shake up and just use the, bar, the top, the lid for your colouring and then you're just going to dab, let's put it where you can see it, you're just going to dab your brush in, again it's still the same cheap brush that you're using and just go over exactly where you put the um, grey along the top along with your little crevice in here. The crevice I've put a little too much in, so I'm gonna go in with a damp cloth and just dab away so it's not too much. You only want a little in there. And again, along the bottom, exactly going up. and going down. And when your brush is almost dry, just tap a little if you have a crevice. And don't put too much. I'm finding because it's going in the crevice, it's going a little too much in the crevice. So just have a damp cloth with you, just to go in there. one's a little too much so yeah damp cloth and even a dry cloth can you be your best friend on this and don't forget to go down
when you find your brush is quite dry, just go in the crevice a little bit because it doesn't seem to need a lot in there. And just go all the way around. Again, I just need to just push back a little bit in the crevice and then go back and you're going up. Dabbing it on, just up the end and down. Just when you've got all the way around, I think I'm getting there, almost all the way around. And then you can just have a look, see if there's any places that needs more or any places that needs less. Any places that needs a little bit subtle and rub it off. I'm just almost done here. I am back to where I was at the beginning. Just finish this top bit here. I find when you dab in your lay, you get a little bit more rather than spots, you kind of get more of a, an aged look. And just have a look, see if there's any parts you're not liking. Like here, I find it's got a little bit of a just permanent line there. There you go. And then I'm just going to use my cloth just to bring back a little of it on the top here so it's not a perfect line bring it back and I think this is actually perfect for me and I'm just going to clear coat it when it's dry I'm gonna leave it overnight to dry and I'm gonna clear coat it what I will use is this product here for my clear coat and just clear coat over the whole thing so I'm going to let it dry overnight but that's my crock pot a crock an old looking crock and I just need to stage it and show you hope you like I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and uh, thumbs up. Thank you.